Good evening and welcome to the January 18th, 2022 meeting of the Roseville Independent Redistricting Commission. The meeting is now called to order. If the clerk can please call roll. Here. Great to see so many people here in the audience. And so we will go ahead and open it up for public comment. And after public comment, we do have three agenda items, an overview of the draft maps and preliminary redistricting plan. Item 5.2 is the draft maps and communities of interest. And that'll be the point where members of the public will have an opportunity to speak about specific maps. And then item 5.3 will be a discussion about the upcoming redistricting meeting schedule. So if you'd like to speak on anything that is not on the agenda, now is the time to do it. If you'd like to speak on something that's an agenda item, we'll wait until the agenda item. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move to item number 5.1. Joe Mandel, you're up. Hello, everyone. This is Joe Mandel from the City Attorney's Office. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. yes. Okay, excellent. Well, we're going to give this a shot tonight, um, and hopefully this works out okay. I'm going to share my screen and put a presentation out there. And can everybody see that okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So I just wanted to go through this, and again, my name is Joe Mandel from the City Attorney's Office, and tonight the District Protecting Commission is going to be holding the fifth of six public hearings to discuss the six draft maps that are being considered for final adoption by the Commission. And so just as an FYI, I've been giving the same overview at each of the public hearings just to make sure that the messaging is consistent. Can everyone, there's an echo on my side, but is everything okay in the room for you guys? Yes. Yes. All right, I'm going to go then. <clears throat> so before we jump into the maps, I just wanted to do a quick recap of what we're doing tonight and just to discuss the redistricting criteria that should be considered when creating a final map. And I know some of this information has been redundant over the last couple of meetings, but I want to make sure everyone's aware of dates and deadlines. So this next slide, let's see. Freeze in a second. Okay, every just the same purpose of the commission on here? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So going forward, I wanted to talk about what why are we here? You know, the purpose of the independent redistricting commission and the redistricting process is to uh, create a process that's open and transparent and allows public comment on, on the drawing of city council district boundaries ensures that district boundaries are drawn according to the districting criteria set forth in the city charter and applicable state and federal laws and ensures that the redistricting process is conducted with integrity fairness and without personal or political considerations and this is all language that was added by the voters when they approved measure r in the general municipal election in november of 2020 and all of this language is incorporated into article 11 of the Roseville city charter which is available on our webpage if anyone would like to ever look that up now this is the start of where we're going to talk about the redistricting criteria that the commission is going to look at and they're going to have to follow so these this slide here talks about the commission shall draw its final map so that item number one, again, this language is specifically straight out of our city charter, Article 11, Section 11.09. So the commission shall draw its final map so that 
Council districts are substantially equal in population as required by the U.S. Constitution, and we determine that population equality uh, based on the information from the most recent decennial census data that we recently received. So item number two, the commission shall draw its final map so that council district boundaries comply with the U.S. Constitution, the California Constitution, the Federal Voting Rights Act, and any other requirements in state federal law uh, applicable to charter cities. So those are the items that we shall look at. And these are the items now, sorry for the wordiness on the slide, but these are the items now that we're looking at in order of priority when we're adopting district boundaries. So these are gonna go in order of priority. So item number one, and you'll see that a lot of these have a qualifier in there about to the extent practicable. So to the extent practicable, council districts shall be geographically contiguous. Item number two, to the extent practicable, the geographic integrity of any local neighborhood, local neighborhood association boundaries, or local community of interest shall be respected in a manner that minimizes its division. And here's where we have a definition. Uh, a community of interest is a population that shares common social or economic interests that should be included within a single district for purposes of its effective and fair representation. And it's important to note that communities of interest do not include relationships with political parties, incumbents, or political candidates. The next item in order of priority that we're looking at, item number three, council district boundaries should be easily identifiable and understandable by residents, and to the extent practicable, council districts shall be bounded by natural and artificial barriers, by streets, or by the boundaries of the city. Item number four, where it does not conflict with the preceding criteria in this subdivision, council districts shall be drawn to encourage geographical compactness in a manner that nearby areas of population are not bypassed in favor of more distant population. And then item number five is kind of the catch-all of any other commission adopted criteria that does not conflict with the other requirements. And so to date, there are no other commission adopted criteria. Moving on. This is still in the city's charter. Item number, this is um, Article 11, Section 11.09 again. So item C, the commission shall not adopt council district boundaries for the purpose of favoring or discriminating against a political party, and the commission shall not consider a place of residence of any individual, including any incumbent or political candidate in the creation of a map. So these are very important shall nots that we uh, are looking at when we're looking at the redistricting criteria. My next few slides are gonna go over the draft maps. On, uh, at our December 22nd meeting, we, the, the commission, took 23 maps that were submitted by the public and narrowed it down to six maps for further consideration. And each one of those maps was labeled draft map A, B, C, D, E, or F. And I'm gonna go over each one of those maps quickly and explain what former um, public map it was as well as a little bit of information about each map. And so this here is draft map A. And draft map A is formerly public map number one. This map has a total deviation of 9.5%, and this map also preserves 89% of neighborhoods. This is draft map B. Draft map B was formerly public map number six. This map has a total deviation of 6.3% and preserves 91% of the neighborhoods. Uh, we're going to be able to discuss all these maps uh, in greater detail later on. I just wanted to do this quick overview to show them all. Draft map C is formerly public map number 8. This map has a total deviation of 4.4% and preserves 78% of the neighborhoods. This is draft map D. Draft map D is formerly public map number 14. It has a total deviation of 6.3% and preserves 93% of the neighborhoods. Draft map E is formerly public map number 15. This map has a total deviation of 8.3% and preserves 98% of the neighborhoods. And draft map F 
This is formerly public map number 25. This map has a total deviation of 6% and preserves 98% of the neighborhoods. Now the next couple slides I'm gonna go through are talking about process and procedure related to adoption of the, uh, of the final map and report. This language comes out of our city charter, Article 11, Section 11.10. This is subsection A. The commission shall file a preliminary redistricting plan and draft map with the city clerk, along with a written statement of findings and reasons for adoption, which shall include the criteria employed in the process and a full analysis and explanation of the decisions made by the commission. The city clerk shall publish the preliminary redistricting plan and draft map at least 30 calendar days prior to the adoption of a final redistricting report and final map. This original redistricting plan and six draft maps were filed with the city clerk on December 22nd. And so what we have been doing now is, in this next slide, we are looking at subsection B. During the 30 calendar day period after publication, the commission shall hold at least five public hearings, including one public hearing in, at least in each existing council district. You can see the dates and times that we have had the prior four meetings, including the most recent one on a Saturday at 2 p.m. at the Civic Center. So here we are on Tuesday night uh, at Martha Riley Library, and then there is another meeting on Thursday night at 6 p.m. at St. John's Episcopal Church. That's our upcoming meeting schedule. And then in my next slide, I'm gonna talk about where we currently have on schedule for a final map adoption meeting date of January 24th, but that I think there's going to have to be further discussion about that date and with the, the details of that meeting, which we can discuss in a few moments, but I want to continue on with my presentation here, where in our charter, this is now subsection C, after having heard comments from the public on the preliminary redistricting plan and draft map, the commission shall adopt a final redistricting report and final map. And the commission adopted final redistricting report and final map has the force and effect of law and is effective 30 calendar days after it's filed with the city clerk and shall remain effective for the next 10 years. And important to note that the city council may not rescind, supersede, or revise the district boundaries that have been adopted by the commission. So I mentioned that we are moving forward with a meeting date of January 24th, and there has been lots of discussion regarding maps and lines and live drawing of lines or things that will change from the existing draft maps that we had. And what does that turn into is does that turn into another map is that something for us to consider and how do we handle that and so at our saturday meeting we had a discussion about some of the details and some of the options that we have for moving forward to um to live line draw and still get a finalized map in place for next week and so I wanted to have some further discussion on that in a moment, but I want to move forward and finish up this portion of the presentation just so I can take the presentation off and we can speak face to face. Um, this is the next slide. So after the final map is adopted, the city clerk shall number each council district such that for as many residents as possible, the number of the council district they reside in remains the same. And then the final item is that the final redistricting report and final map shall be subject to referendum in the same manner as ordinances. So if anyone has any questions in the meantime, please feel free to contact the city clerk's office um, all of this information comes to me as well. And so with that, I wanted to go back to this language here uh, on the screen and specifically talking about after having heard comments from the public and on the preliminary redistricting plan and draft map, the commission shall adopt a final redistricting report and final map. So we talked about a couple of options at the last meeting. I'm stopping sharing my screen so if everyone can see me now. Uh, we talked about a couple of options for moving forward at the January 24th meeting and whether or not we should live line draw and can adopt a final map on that same night. And we talked about uh, there's some options moving forward 
and the city attorney's recommendation and city attorney's office recommendation is that we have a few options. We could adopt one of the draft maps that is being circulated, obviously without changes on the 24th, but our recommendation is that if we are to make changes to the map on the 24th, we should come back seven days later on January 31st for a final map adoption because in the elections code, this is in California elections code 21628, uh, this is where it talks about how a draft map should be published on the city's website for seven days prior to final adoption. And if we're going to take maps that have been, you know, essentially published on the city clerk's page, change those up on the 24th, and try to final adopt those on the same day, uh, that's a lot of changes in one day without um, without a further publication. And so there is no guidance on this necessarily for us, but we're pulling from an analogous state associated elections code which provides us some guidance that if you publish this for a week um, after any sort of changes then we can come back for final adoption we also have an option that we sort of discussed last time of publishing of, of if we are to redraw lines on the 24th if we were to publish that for another 30 days and then come back sometime in the end of February, we sort of discussed what timelines would be affected by that. Uh, but that is a level of discussion that I think is appropriate for tonight's meeting and for Chair Frank, for, you, for me to turn this back over to you to sort of facilitate a discussion on, um, you know, sort of some of the procedure moving forward and what the commission would have a desire to do moving forward on January 24th. We also have the city attorney, Michelle Scheidenberger here, who helped draft this language and can maybe provide some um, some other information and insight as well. But I'm gonna kick it back over to the chair for, um, for his further discussion at this point. Thank you, Joe. And before we open it up to commissioners for any questions for Joe's, on Joe's presentation, you may see the letters KS up there on the screen. And that's uh, Kimi Shigatani. She's with uh, Redistricting Partners, one of the consultants that's helping us with this process. And so she may jump in from time to time to help answer some questions as well. So again, thank you, Joe, for your presentation. Um, I'll open it up to commissioners if you have any questions regarding the overview of the draft maps and the preliminary plan. I have a question. Uh, the city clerk numbering the uh, districts, how long does it take for her to do that and he or she to do that? I, I think I know the answer to the question that you're asking. And so the, the slide that relates to the city council's, uh, the, or the, I'm sorry, the city clerk shall renumber the districts. I, I asked Jed, our demographer, that today. He has already done that. So the numbers that we're seeing is essentially taking and displacing the minimum number of people right now. So we sort of did that with this draft map, um, if that helps with your discussion at all. So on the 24th, when we decide on a final map, we'll also know what the district numbers will be? Yes, so the numbers that are on the districts now are the numbers that that you know, I'm going to say displaced the, the least number of, of voters uh, with the renumbering. So I asked Jed if he would be able to live do that calculation during our meetings if we are to change up numbers or, or change up boundary lines. And he said that yes, we would be able to do that. Okay, thank you. Any other commissioners have questions? Is there any guidance on if we decide to do live line drawing? what is an acceptable delta from an existing map before it becomes something completely different? We have had six maps in front of people now for three meetings, and our last meeting, another map was introduced. So half of these meetings have had public comment on something that may not be representative of what they were allowed to comment on. So what, what delta is there from any map that the public has been allowed to look at thus far 
if we are going to make changes. So is there a standard or a definition of what change, significant change, tweaking, do we have any definitions that we can rely on? Kimmy, you wanna jump in? Kimmy, were you gonna say anything here? Um, I was just gonna say that any map, any changes you make to the map effectively makes it a new map, so. Yeah, I know we had that discussion last time about you know the the school paper they send in the draft is never the same as the final or any of that, and, and so we recognize that there are going to be changes. But yes, if there is a change, to me that is a you're essentially creating a new draft. If it's okay, can I go ahead and read for all of us just like some of the relevant excerpts from our, our previous meetings about changes and what we can expect. Okay, so I can, I can email this into the record after the meeting as well, but I just thought it might be nice to ground us in what did we say to make sure we understand maybe where everyone is coming from. But are these then, these are just your interpretation of no, what you think we said? No, these are transcriptions. These okay. are verbatim what was said. So on the, and anyone can go back to the YouTube videos and go back and watch these. So I'll reference the time as well. So on the November 22nd meeting at minute 15 and 10 seconds, Jed Roberts said the IRC will be meeting on December 20th to select draft plans to publish for broad public consideration. I mean, that's really to serve as the discussion pieces for a series of six public hearings in January for the commission to take comments on draft plans and to con continue to consider any community of interest testimony. During that period in January, the commission will have the opportunity to revise those draft plans in response to what you're hearing from the public. And then on January 24th, that is when we're scheduled to have the adoption of the final plan. Then later in the meeting, at minute 48 and 45 seconds, Jed continues. And I just want to drive home that the draft plans, they are not set in stone. Just because they've been published as draft plans does not mean that they need to, one of them needs to be adopted as the final plan as is. Those can be changed in response to public input up until the adoption meeting of January 24th. And then the last, last section is from the December 20th meeting at minute 43 and 30. A commissioner asked, I think I know the answer to this, but when we narrow down the maps to the handful tonight, and then we listen to the public during these meetings, do we have any power or authority to adjust the most favorable map? If it's just a matter of a couple of blocks or that little corner of a neighborhood, and without having, once we make the adjustment, additional public meetings. Joe Mandel said, the public meetings are going to be part of that process of refining that map. And so yes, the map will change. It will be changed up throughout the next 30 days into what will ultimately be one final map with the boundaries that you have on it. So yes, it will change and we'll move and Jed will be able to talk about that as he's, you know, the logistics of how we would do that. And it wrapped up by saying, a commissioner asked, I'm sorry, there can be tweaks to the ones we're choosing from the public hearings? And Joe Mandel said, absolutely. The final map may look nothing like any of the ones we're moving forward right now. Maybe a blend of everything. So I wanted to read that out loud just to make sure that we all understand what was said to the public and that they may have come to the hearing today bringing forward feedback and expecting us to make changes. So as we discuss what threshold of change we're going to tolerate, I did want to remind all of us that we told the public that they could make any amount of changes. We did not put a delta on it. So I'll, I'll just leave that. I can <coughs> send this in, but if you listen back to tonight's recording, it's got the timestamps that you can also go yourself and listen to. For me, that still goes back to a transparency issue, though. It, we, we can, you can read that, yes. but what, what was submitted on Saturday is still something that has to be transparent to the four public meetings that we've held thus far. And going forward. So it still, to me, comes down to that it's, it was put in a map format. You actually tried to submit it through the map program because you mentioned that on Saturday that it wouldn't allow you to submit it. So it, to, it and also got back to, I think it's still more than 
just tweaks in the format that you did it, and it's all about the process to make we're trans make sure we're transparent for all of them. Yeah, it has I nothing to do with totally. the map itself. It's our process. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Joe, just, Joe a quick question. Okay. Joe, at, at some point we're gonna be doing motions to maybe narrow down maps um, or to accept certain changes. So even if suggestions are put forward, at some point we're going to take a motion and whether we agree to those changes or not. And if we don't, then we move on to a different map. Um, is that correct? Is, what is that gonna look like on, on the 24th? So on the 24th, there has been some discussion about how that would happen with narrowing down or moving forward certain maps. So again, we moved from the 23 public maps down to the six draft maps that we have. And so there was a suggestion by a commissioner that came in, and there's been a couple of comments as well. Um, and I'm going to sort of introduce this to the group as an option for moving forward for the at the meeting on January 24th, where we're talking about you know live line drawing, I'm going to call it. And so there would be a point that is being suggested where we take the six draft maps and narrow it down to whatever that number is, one, two, three, four, for then live line drawing and tweaking to figure out the actual boundaries. Um, you know, the, the comments that were made earlier by Julia as far as um, you know, the, the draft maps get submitted up, or the, you know, public maps get submitted up to a certain point and then draft maps are moved forward. And I think there was always an understanding that there would be a discussion regarding uh, where those boundaries should be drawn. And that was the purpose of these public hearings. And so um, I, I think if we are going to narrow it down as a group, the group should have a discussion about that. If that's a way that you would consider, um, you know, getting from six down to two, three, four for further tweaking. But for tonight, we're still just receiving public comment and that kind of discussion to narrow it would be for the 24th. Correct. We're not going to be taking any motions. There's no agenda items for that tonight. Correct. And, and at any point, anybody from the, the uh, public or any commissioner can, can pick a map and say, I recommend these tweaks to the map, ideally based on public testimony, right? Um, but of course, we're all, we're all members of the public as well. And, and those can be submitted for transparency's sake, but doesn't necessarily mean we're going to take any action on them. There has to be a motion to take any action on them. And, and if I can clarify something before we go into some more comment, for that meeting on the 24th, if there were to be live line drawing and tweaks made to various maps and a final adoption done on that same day, um, I think that the attorney's office could support that. I just don't think that would be our recommendation. Our recommendation would be if there's any sort of tweaks made to a map that it be then published on the internet for at least seven days prior to its adoption. And so that would make the final adoption meeting theoretically seven days later on January 31st. And so then when we're looking at what an adoption of the final map is, that adoption of the final map is a resolution being passed by the redistricting commission that says we're selecting this map. And so that's not necessarily what is going to happen on the 24th anymore, it sounds like, given the amount of tweaking that is being discussed for these maps. Do you have something you wanted to add to what you're saying? Yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, the, the comments that I put in as public comment with my synthesis of what I've heard so far and iterations to improve a map, really, that is just where I'm at right now. And it's, it's meant to be in the spirit of transparency. I'm really taking my understanding of this role to really listen to the public let you know where I'm at in terms of evaluating the maps and then continue to listen. So I'm, I'm trying to give as much information about what changes I would like to suggest on the 24th so I can continue to hear feedback. So I hope that, you know, commissioners, we will all continue to say where we're at and talk about any changes or tweaks or adjustments to maps now so people have a chance to hear it and respond to it ahead of the 24th. And since the last meeting, you have submitted 
more yeah. specific. You said this is a, these are changes to map A, which we didn't have that information yes. before, and then what they are. So I and, and we might still want to wait for you know uh, the demographer to say what those numbers are going to look like given those changes. Right. I appreciate the feedback that you know the commission wanted the end result written out in a particular way. As we know, there if you're going somewhere, there's a lot of different ways you can get there. Um, but I went ahead and I outlined it in the most simple form. So you can take a look at the adjustments to map A, the tweaks to map A that I'm gonna propose on January 24th. But if you have commentary on those adjustments or you're like, you know what, I don't like that change. I would love to hear that because we're not at January 24th and we're still listening. So please let me know, commissioners, public, what you think of those suggested changes ahead of the 24th. Okay, any other commissioners? Uh, during this agenda item questions for Joe all right then we will go ahead and open it for public comment I just want to clarify that this is public comment on Joe's presentation on the overview of the maps we're going to be having on item 5.2 um, more details about the maps themselves and that will be probably the more uh, correct way for the public to say what they like about a map or don't like about a map. So if you have any questions for Joe or comments about the overview presentation, you're welcome to for, for public comment. And we don't have any public calling in tonight, correct? I don't have a capacity. If I don't see anybody approaching the microphone. Oh, the microphone? If you have something that uh, on this agenda item, and again, there will be an opportunity to talk about your, your thoughts about certain maps in the next agenda item. If you can state your name for the record, please. Lisa Larkin. I just wanted to uh, comment that the tech, the, there was a problem, technical problem with the website today, and I did not see uh, the map that was posted in public comment or any additional public comments made since the last meeting. They weren't posted, so I don't know if that's because of the technology. Does anybody know? Today, they are all printed on the side table, unfortunately. They're over there now? Yeah, that's Okay, correct. and did that include the map? It yeah. does, yes. It does, okay. Well, I actually emailed the commissioner to ask her to send it to me because I was curious to see what it looked like. And as you all know, I was in favor of E, F, and D. And I said at one point I was in favor of A if we wanted to put Sun City back in District 4. And I actually really like the changes that Commissioner Sweeney has recommended, and I would support that map fully. Okay, thank you. Just to clarify, the city website went down this weekend, so we, we just now got back up today, and that's why there's probably a little bit of delay on getting those public comments posted. I think even up until 4 o'clock today, it was down. Yeah, All right, Stan, on this agenda item, we can state your name Stan for the record. Bollinger, Stan Bollinger. Okay, I live in the Crest Haven area. I'm, I'm looking at uh, these maps, and uh, it looks like uh, District 2 is in Map A, and then Map C, District 1 is in, okay, it says District 1 is in my, it'll be my district, but I'm concerned, confused about the line from, uh, it looks like it's Vineyard Road or Douglas Road, or it drops down, so the, if you go to Map C, You'll see on the right side of the freeway there. I don't know if that's Douglas Road or, or Vineyard Road because it's, I can't read the uh, street here. But this whole area down here where it goes from Maidu to the east, to Johnson Ranch to the east, all the way to Crest Haven to the west, southwest. So I think Map C, I'd like to uh, make a vote on Map C. Okay, thank you. And, and again, just a reminder that in the next agenda item, that'll be the opportunity to talk about which maps you like. And uh, do you have any questions for Joe on his overview presentation? Oh, not really. Thank you. I, I think just uh, if you had a question on Douglas Boulevard, I think Douglas Boulevard is more to the north, and what you're looking at is more uh, Kirby for going east to west. Kirby. Okay. Any other public comment regarding Joe's presentation in item 5.1? See, like maybe there's one. You're good. Uh, so we'll go ahead. 
Oh, yeah. I, I just if you don't mind coming to the microphone and stating your name. My name is Sue Cook from the Putting It Farm neighborhood. Um, I was just wondering if, you know, I think you've been talking that this, uh, the changes, suggested changes so far are on the website somewhere. Hopefully. So okay. ch suggested changes for map A. Are they brief enough to run over to today just so that we can um, no, not be repetitive? Thank you. Do you feel I comfortable can, waiting until item 5.2? Yeah, absolutely. And, then, and we can talk about any um, changes to any maps? And so they should be in the pack. People can grab that packet. So in there. the back, there's a packet that also has the specific very hard changes. To tell, though, when you just, you know, anybody wants to get her a, a copy of it, that'd be great. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and close public comment oh, on item 5.1. You will have an opportunity at, under other agenda items. Thank you. All right, again, this was for information only. No action is required. So we'll move on to item 5.2, draft map and community of interest public testimony. Joe, you are up. Okay, this is great. This is the item that we are going to receive uh, testimony on communities of interest as well as on each one of those draft maps and i also just wanted to i normally i would be holding up the form if i was in the room but there is a blue form at the back of the room that has questions about your community of interest and so i'm just going to read off some of the questions if people want to comment at all tonight these are some of the questions you can kind of keep in the back of your mind uh, the first question on here is just which draft map do you think best serves the interests of the residents of the city of Roseville? And then you get to select draft map A, B, C, D, E, or F. And then please describe what you like or do not like about the draft maps that you selected above. And so then there's another section below that talking about communities of interest and what is a community of interest. And so a community of interest is a group of people in the same geographically definable area who share common social and economic interests. And as you remember, this was one of our, um, I believe is the second most important uh, redistricting criteria and order of priority. And so in a way of documenting your community of interest, here's some questions to think about. What are the common interests in your community and describe how they're important explain the geographical location of your community of interest and what are the physical boundaries what is the reason your community of interest should be considered in the redistricting process and please describe how the redistricting process could have an impact on your community or anything else that you'd like to tell us about your community so that's all i have to introduce this item this is really an opportunity uh, to gather public comment and so i'm going to turn it back over to you chair frank all right, thank you. Again, this is an opportunity for um, commissioners to ask questions about the draft maps themselves. And Joe, can you remind us, do we have Jed available right now for any of this? No, so Jed is our demographer. So you recall we hired Flow Analytics, and so Jed is not available. <clears throat> I will tell you that the, the edits and the changes and the proposed things that have been coming in, we're working on those in the background and we'd sort of hope to be able to have a little bit of visual information for you guys tonight, but um, not quite yet. What I do have though is I have an overlay of the specific plans over the existing City of Roseville map. It needs to be, like I can release that tomorrow to, for Brian to put up on the website, but I know there's been some questions coming in about that specific plan map. And so there is no JED tonight, but we're getting the maps and the draft map ideas and tweaks worked on right now. And I think uh, early, a few meetings ago, the question about the specific plan maps from a commissioner was that we have them printed and available at these meetings. Yes. So that'll still be an option. Uh, yes. Okay, commissioners. Uh, I'd like to inquire if any of you have any questions or comments regarding Joe's presentation, but it's kind of an opportunity for us to talk about um, particular maps. We can move along the, the way here or want to make eye contact. Yes. I have a comment. It just would be super, super, super helpful moving forward to have the suggested changes that we had for B um, in front of us so that we can look at it before the 24th. Um, 
I, you know, we talked about the historic Sierra Vista neighborhood moving them into District 2 and um, maybe trying to put uh, Caseburg Kings into one uh, neighborhood. Because um, I, I think, um, it, I think if we put it on the table now, earlier, sooner rather than later, it will be helpful for us. Now, we still have two more hearings to go. We still have to go to the west side even further. So, um, but I think to be able to see it, to see it from Jed would be very helpful. So just as Julia submitted some suggestions to map A, I had submitted some suggestions to map B uh, a week and a half, two weeks ago, but mm -hmm. haven't, haven't seen it printed out yet. So hopefully staff can get that to us so we can, um, the email was sent to the city clerk's office and the model. Yes, and, and, and I can follow up on some of that as well because what Jed is looking at, in addition to the edits that, that Julia and uh, Paul sent in, if there are other comments coming in from neighbor or from from you know, neighborhoods or talking about anything about any proposed boundary changes, Jed is trying to summarize all of those, and you know maybe someone's comments are already incorporated in somebody else's comments, and so that's also what Jed's doing in the background, so that you know maybe we only have a couple of different tweaks in reality that we're talking about when we're talking about tweaking things, and so that's just the level. I do not have that level of information to provide to the group tonight. I, I can't tell you, Holly, though, because I submitted those suggestions that the main component was putting Sierra Vista, Historic Sierra Vista Neighborhood Association in the District 2. Yeah. Um, potentially moving Escaton Village on Pleasant Grove into District 4 yeah. rather than District 5. And then if the Sierra Vista made changes in population, potentially moving the border of Caseburg, Kingswood a little bit more north or Stone Ridge border a little bit south, but only if that's necessary to balance out the population. <coughs> Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Again, this is kind of the, the meat and potatoes part of our, our evening to ask about maps. Do you want me to? I'm sorry. So any commissioners have any more comments regarding? Do you want me to sum up? Say Would you like to, sure. Okay. It's, 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 it's printed, right? It's part of the record, yeah. right? Okay, so. It, it's it's your it's your choice. If this is our opportunity as commissioners to speak, and if you'd like to, you're welcome to. Okay. Well, I, we get to talk again after the public comment or discussion, right? Please. After public comment, I do, we don't have that on the agenda. After public comment, of course. Okay. So, public comment, you can have okay. Yeah. So I, I can. Okay. Any other commissioners? Okay. So we'll go ahead and. Open up public comment. Again, this is for members of the public to talk about the six draft maps that have been presented. If you'd like to come up and state your name. I'd like it if we can have people who haven't spoken at other at previous meetings um, come up first. But I don't see a, a long line forming yet. So if you'd like to come up, state your name, and any preference for a particular map. Yeah, my name is Dan Bollinger. I live in the Crest Haven neighborhood. And uh, one thing I'd like to see if, uh, if these maps are on the internet, that if you could zoom into the areas where it shows the major, the major streets that are going north and south, east and west, it'd be very helpful if we had the major streets in because uh, for now I'm, I'm, I'm voting on the map number C because you've got the, the south area. South of, uh, I guess this is not Vineyard Road, but whatever that road is going straight across. Could be Douglas, but uh, anyway, the uh, area south, west, and southeast of Map C. It'd be nice if you could put in the, uh, the major streets. My, my, my uh, pick would be Map C because the Crest Haven neighborhood being district number one. District number one, and I think it's a good call. All right, thank you. If I can jump in real quick, uh, on the city's redistricting webpage, there is the tab, there are the tabs across the top of it for each one of the maps. And there is a link in there for a high resolution map that you can download, and that gets all the way down to 
street names and you can wallpaper your living room with them. They're that big. So uh, if you needed to get a larger copy of it, they're available on the website. Any other members of the public who'd like to speak on, speak on this agenda item? State your name, please. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Gretchen Littlejohn. Uh, I lived in Roseville for the last 25 years. I've, my kids were born and raised here. I've coached at Bull John and Roseville High School. Uh, my mom lives in Sun City. Um, upon careful consideration of the six proposals, I urge the commission to select map B, remove maps A, D, E, and F from final consideration. Other maps split Sun City into more than one district, which they've gone on record repeatedly saying they don't want. Map B is the least disruptive in our community. Uh, don't adjust boundaries more than you have to. So please hear my request to adopt Map B. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. State your name, please. Um, good evening, everyone. Is it okay to remove the mask while I'm speaking? That'd be fine, yeah. Just a comment about uh, watching the Saturday uh, session. It was hard to, to listen to because the um, people when were talking. You couldn't tell who was talking. You couldn't understand what they were saying. So I would suggest that if you're going to be speaking, um, perhaps remove your mask so we know who's speaking. So, um, that's just a suggestion. Thank you very much. My, my name is Steve Cho, and I've been, um, I guess you were classifying me as a new resident of, of Roseville. Uh, I, in fact, wanted to apply for this commission that you're sitting on. And unfortunately, I fell three months shy of the minimum requirement. I was here two years, nine months, and, and the requirement was three years. Um, just to give you the background, I was participating in the redistricting while living in Fremont for the 40, 45 years. So I'm familiar with the process and what goes on. And I'm glad to hear that uh, the, uh, the redistricting uh, decision is being uh, given to an independent commission. Um, because back in Fremont, um, the commission, well, the decision was made by city council. And, and I guess you would imagine uh, the final decision favored the current places where the uh, incumbents live. So that, that should be taken out of the equation. Uh, we want to ensure that uh, whatever districts or the maps that are gonna be drawn, uh, look for the better interests of what goes on in Roseville. And, and that should be the bottom line, as opposed to political parties uh, and you know, just other, other items of interest. But in terms of uh, the six maps I'm looking at, and I, I'm sorry that uh, the city had a problem with the website uh, this weekend because I wanted to look that uh, to make sure that I understood all of the intricacy of what was going on. But unfortunately, it was uh, not operative. Uh, in looking at the six maps, I think uh, where I live, in, and uh, because this is the location close to where I live, um, and that's why you're seeing a lot of people from this area. And it's good that you're going out to the various areas because you're gonna have people commenting on different interests of where they live. And so based on my own perception of the maps, I think uh, district uh, level or district map B is the one that would be the most favorable to the way I see uh, following the four components of what we're looking at, compactness, uh, community of interest, uh, and the other two, um, but uh, you know, just looking at uh, the, the map for simplicity, uh, it's easy to to uh, to see where the lines are and where the districts fall. And so, compared to the other five, uh, I would favor B. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Good evening, if you can state your name for the record, please. Um, my name is Judy Hansel, and I'm a resident at 6040 Buckspit. 
laid in Roseville. I've resided in this city for uh, about uh, five years, having moved back from uh, to California, from Michigan. Um, and I am so pleased that we are going to get this redistricting done in a nonpartisan way. Um, I live in a senior community, and um, I favor Nappy because I think it is most conducive to keeping the continuity of this area in which I live. Um, I thank you all for taking your time to do this important work for us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, commissioners. My name is Jay Reed. I've spoken to you several times before. Um, again, um, you guys are doing a great job. I really appreciate the level of concern that you have in getting it right. Um, there's been a lot of concern expressed amongst the commissioners about a legal challenge for your proposed map. And, Quite honestly, I didn't really share that concern initially because I always felt that your process is what you would fall back on. You would, you know, you would uh, approve a map, and if someone didn't like the map, you could always refer back to the process. The process, again, is something that the voters approved in 2020, and it, you have set forth six public hearings on the six maps that um, you have decided to move forward with. I have to say that after Saturday's meeting, I'm more concerned about the legal challenge of a map because you have decided to change your process midstream. Um, your own city attorney, and correct me if I'm wrong, she said that she couldn't define what was a tweak and what was a change. And if you guys want to introduce new maps, and I appreciate Commissioner Sweeney and her like trying to like, you know, find a map that works for everyone, but that is a new map. And so now I'm concerned that like a tweak to an existing map is a new map, especially if the city attorney can't define what that is. And so like, again, like that's fine if you want to introduce new maps, I would like, expect and hope that you restart the process then. Again, with more public hearings, more public input, because the process is what you guys fall back on as your legal defense on your ultimate approval of a map. So be very, I think that you guys need to be very, I'll go back to 2010, and there was all kinds of controversy about the new district boundaries and the way that the city council went about them. Well, this is why there's a charter and we vote, the voters voted to have this, a independent redistricting commission that was, you know, voted by the, you know, approved by the voters and you guys set forth the process. So we are looking to you as this independent body to make the decision. You have put forth six maps from an entire process that was, you know, uh, that took several months back in the fall. Okay? And now we're going to change, we're going to tweak, we're going to twerk, we're going to introduce new maps. I, I just, uh, you guys, I think that you need to take a step back a little bit and understand, like, if you're going to really introduce new maps, and that's fine, then you have to restart the process again. Um, I'm in favor of map B. I don't think that there's a lot of foundational changes. There's some tweaks from the existing boundaries that exist out there in Roseville today. Um, the other maps are completely foundational. They completely change the foundation of where we are. Um, so 
this is, this is your job. This is what you guys were, you know, you applied to do and what you were approved by the city council to do. And so if you're going to like make wholesale changes or even tweaks, which she can't define what's a tweak and what's a foundational change, then you guys have to restart the process again. And I hate to say that because this thing can go on and on and on and on. And when does it stop? When do we stop taking changes to maps? Um, so, I, again, I appreciate your effort. You know, one of the things that was mentioned um, last week uh, on Saturday as well was that, oh, well, Placer County made last minute changes, so you guys should be able to do that as well. No, you guys have a charter. Placer County voters did not approve a process for redistricting supervisor districts. There is a charter that Roseville voters approved. Okay, so that is a very, that is apples and oranges to compare your process to Placer County. All right, the other thing is this voter, I call it, pardon me for a moment, the delay of your voter participation analysis. I don't think it's okay for a voter to vote for a council member in 2018, 2020, and again in 2022. Nor do I think it's okay for a voter not to vote for a new council member for six years, from 2016 to 2022 or 2018 to 2024. That is not okay. And the maps that you have before you in D, E, and F, more than a quarter of the population of Roseville are delayed that opportunity. That's not voter, you know, one of the commissioners, and I don't remember who it was, but they said, well, it's not voter suppression. Well, if you're voting every two years for a, a council member and some people aren't voting for six years, you got equal opportunity issues. I'm sorry, but you do. Now, there are other maps before you that like, you know, the, the, the impact is minimal. So, I mean, those are important aspects in which you guys need to consider. I've already told you about the specific plan and like the smell test and all that kind of stuff on maps. So, again, I think that you folks need to adhere to your process. You've, you've already set forth. And if you want to introduce new maps, you got to restart the process again. Thank you. Other members of the public who would like to speak on item 5.2? Can you state your name, please? <coughs> Carol Weaver. And I actually purchased my home back in 1989 in the Caseburg Kingswood area. And I think that the commission is doing a great job and it takes a lot of um, commitment to our city to be in your seat. So I really appreciate that. Um, I didn't actually see, you know, Commissioner Sweeney had put in her recommendations and what she was hearing and um, letting, the, letting the public know about that. And I understand you also put in uh, your, your changes that you would like to see. And um, I know that um, this commissioner, I don't know your name, was saying that you know it's in transparency. It feels as though putting it into the public record is so transparent. And just like there isn't a map seven and there isn't a map eight, and if there is another public maybe a public uh, person submitted a map, that wouldn't be map nine. It's part of this process. And I'm sorry, I'm, I have good news and bad news for you, Jay Reed. We discussed everything you talked about before you got here. So you might wanna look at the recording of the process. And yes, in fact, we will have a new map. We will all have a new map with boundaries that are best for this city and you are all tasked for doing that and I appreciate it. Um, Caseburg Kingswood, I would like to see stay whole. I would like to see it stay whole with like-minded community. Um, one of your suggestions to be putting it down with the older neighborhoods doesn't make sense and um, I think in the other areas with Sun City, they've requested to be on their own. That I, I, I can agree with too but I, I speak for myself as to why I believe Caseburg Kingswood should be whole and it should be with like-minded houses. I don't, I don't like your addition of moving it down to kind of push, push pull. But I think that I really appreciate that you put that out there because these are some thoughts 
I'd like to hear some thoughts from some of the other commissioners as to where you're going instead of, I don't like this, this isn't transparent. Tell me what you're thinking. I'd like to know your thoughts and what you think is, is going to be best for this community. So thank you. Thank you. Members of the public. Good evening, how are you? Good evening. I too would like to thank all of you. I know you have volunteered many hours of time for this and I, as a citizen of Roseville, really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, do you mind stating your name also? I'm sorry? Do you mind stating your name also? I'm sorry, uh, Gwen Myers, M-Y-E-R-S. And I, I have to be truthful, I have not followed this as extensively as maybe I should have. However, I came here tonight with the thought that these are the maps that are going to be discussed. No changes, you know, that this, this is what, what we were going to talk about and we would give our input as to what map we thought would be the best. And now we're getting into this other situation. Um, and I don't know what your um, responsibility is to tweaking or changing the maps. I don't know if that's part of your job or is your job just to listen and find out what maps people currently approve of or are like. So anyway, I will say that I um, would like, because of the area I live in, I would like to suggest map B. Um, I think that most of them fit into areas like, um, in my area, it's mostly residential and and it's bounded by different streets, so I think that that would be uh, the, the map that I would recommend. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm Amy Cho, and I live in West Roseville. I'd like to thank the commissioners for all the work you're doing. Um, very simply, I'd just like to say that I uh, go for the map B, the way it stands, because it's more or less simple. It doesn't seem to go into, I mean, if I look at some of the others, I wonder what those reasons are for. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to say as a citizen, um, which the lady before me and the gentleman before, I thought today that I would put the time in to come in because I was considering the six maps. I would like to give my uh, consideration to it. But it sounds like we're almost going in another circle. I'm confused and maybe you don't understand what it is, but it sounds like there could be other maps and I thought that's what the commissioners would sift out for us. I thought it came down from 23 to 6 and now it sounds like we might be possibly going into other iterations. So um, I'd like to keep it simple and if I come to the meeting, I'd like to know that I'm addressing and saying what I think would be a, what I choose, but now I don't know if that's gonna be going on and on. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public that are to step forward? Can you state your name for the record, please, sir? Good evening, Andy Tag uh, from, I guess this is Old West Roseville now, the Quail Glen area, now that we got West Park, but I've lived here for 15 years. I also serve on the uh, Roseville Joint Union High School Board, but I'm here as a, a citizen. And one thing I would add on uh, communities of interest, I certainly would think that the schools are a big community of interest and in where you go to schools. And I look at our boundary, our high school boundaries, and, and as I look at these various maps, and um, I really, I look at map B as the best, um, looking at the best map with the, with the low deviation, 91% of the neighborhoods are preserved. They seem to match some of our high school boundaries. And then where I live in the Quail Glen neighborhood, um, you can't separate Quail Glen and Pleasant Grove, um, which I see being done on other maps. Um, they're very tight communities. Our families uh, go to similar schools, play sports together. I would also incorporate Blue Oaks in that. And now, of course, Campus Oaks. Um, coming along. We've always had that neighborhood relationship with Sun City using this facility here at Mark O'Reilly, the sports center. 
seeing uh, people at uh, Rayleigh, Safeway. So I think that's, that, that District 4, as is presented in Map 4, is a very compact district. It's very community oriented, it makes sense. Um, and I think looking at the rest of the map, you also have very compact areas. Um, so I would be in favor of map B as it is today and going forward. And again, I also appreciate your work and I know what you're going through. Actually, if you really want a tough call, come to a school board meeting sometime. Uh, <laughs> you'll really see some, uh, some upset parents, all those things and calm down. My colleague uh, Lisa knows that as well, so thank you so much. Uh, I'm Elisa Fong. Um, I'm also a Roseville City resident. I've lived here for about 20 years now. I want to thank all of you for your time and the dedication to our community to serve on this commission. Uh, like my colleague, uh, Mr. Tag, I would also like to advocate for Map B. Um, I also serve on the Roseville City School District Board. I have, been, I have had the honor and the privilege of serving for over five years now. I live in the Blue Oaks area, um, which I still consider West Roseville as well, although it is becoming a little bit older West Roseville these days, and have enjoyed watching it grow as well. Um, and again, after careful consideration, I do, I do advocate for Map B. It does improve upon our current map configuration, and is, to me, the least disruptive to our community, and the existing boundaries are not dramatically adjusted. Uh, it meets all the redistribution criteria, the compactness, easily identifiable, honoring communities' interests, and while also meeting population needs. The other maps, um, especially A, B, E, and F, if those are, those are selected, I, along with almost 30,000 voters in my area, will not have the opportunity to vote for six years, which another gentleman has also mentioned. I do want to have a voice in who represents me in my community, and disenfranchising voters shouldn't be an acceptable consequence of this very thoughtful process. I think this can be easily avoided by selecting map B, and I urge you to do that. Thank you. I have a quick, quick question. Okay. For me? Yeah, yeah, maybe you can help me because, I mean, uh, Wood Creek Oaks, right, is one of the neighborhoods. Is that where the high school is? I'm just, this is purely curiosity. So, well, Wood Creek Oaks, I, I live off of Wood Creek Oaks, in the Blue Oaks area, but yeah, Blue Oaks. So some of the people in that area go to Wood Creek. Okay, so this, I mean, this map, the high school is down here, not here. <laughs> I'm on the Roosevelt City School District, I'm not okay. on the high school. Well, I'm right <laughs> <here>. <laughs> I see where all of our attendance boundaries Thank happen. This is like the, the, that's the Roosevelt High School includes um, our <coughs> high schools. High school. So the, the school, the color code here. The school is essentially down here, right? I mean, I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> Well, while they're looking at that, is that school boundary map something we can yeah, you can divide at the next meeting? Okay, so this is Pleasant yes. Grove here. Yeah. So this, this is it's just south of Pleasant Grove. Okay. okay. All right. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. Um, and so I would also give us some time calling the other side that looking at the high school district boundary as well as the elementary school boundaries, those are very important communities of interest. So those should be tried to do. And we're going to ask staff to provide some maps of at the very least the high school boundaries, perhaps the elementary school boundaries as well. Um, so we'll have that at the next meeting for the public and for the commissioners. Hi, good evening, how are you? Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. My name is Kathleen Crawford. I'm a tenure resident of Sun City, Roseville. Um, I'll start on a topic I didn't mean to mention tonight, but that is the school boundaries. I'm a former school board member, so I understand school boundaries pretty well. Not here, but I understand the concepts. Um, there is a high school within Stone's Throw here off of Wood Creek High School, uh, right on Wood Creek Boulevard. And there's another new high school just on the other side off of Blue Oaks. So we have two high schools. The high school district encompasses the entire city of Roseville. The, each School boundary can actually change according to population and student needs. So school boundaries, which were not mentioned in the charter as something to consider, is something that is uh, little, can be changed by the school boards themselves. And I think that that's kind of an issue that is something that, you know, is not a definite that's out there that will really make much in the way of changes. The elementary districts are even more complicated. 
Um, I have four grandchildren in the city. Um, they go to the high school district and Dry Creek Union, which has middle and elementary. So the school district boundaries are quite convoluted in this city. Um, so I'll move off of school boundaries as something that I'm not sure you should put very high on your priorities. Um, as a resident of Sun City, what I hear from most people in Sun City is that we want to be in one district, as a community in one district. Um, I haven't heard many people complain about not having an opportunity to vote by having a two-year delay. We did all vote um, for the council members uh, until the last election in 20. And then that case, because of districts two and four not being up for election, we didn't vote. But that was a decision that was made at the time the council made the district boundaries. And so it was always known to us that we would not be able to vote until 22. To be able not to vote until 24, again, I don't see most people being that concerned about that issue. Um, I'm somebody who votes every time. I'm somebody who works the polls. So I really do believe that voting is an essential issue, but not when we're looking at the needs of the whole city and the boundaries that will be in place for 10 years. And I would recommend that you look closely at what the charter has asked you to do in terms of what was approved by the voters. And I think that maps uh, E and F, which keep 98% of the neighborhoods together, um, are excellent maps. There are some people who would like um, small adjustments to those maps, in which case you are having public hearings to hear about those recommendations. Nobody ever said that these are the only six maps you can ever consider. In fact, you were told that you can make changes and that it's possible and likely after public hearing that you would hear better ideas. So I would recommend that you proceed along, that you find a map or two, that you make the adjustments that the community has requested, and that you get a majority support from your commission and put it in place. It doesn't matter whether it's on January 24th or January 31st or three weeks later after a 30-day waiting period because however you decide to move, there will always be someone who doesn't like what you've done. There will always be someone who will have a problem with what you've done. But it's your task to come to consensus and move ahead. And so I really uh, recommend that you find the um, patience to get through the next two meetings and that you do what you can in the best interest of the city as a whole. So I hope that, that you take these comments in that kind of very generous, kind spirit, and that you then are able to move ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Clarkin, Coastal resident, 20 years. You guys heard from me quite often. Um, I didn't intend to speak again. However, some of the comments I think need to be countered. Uh, there was a gentleman in the back that seemed to insinuate that you would be sued for the map of your selection. However, I think your legal department will guide you in that. And I believe today they told you that you can make changes to the maps and they will guide you with the process to do that, whether it be posted seven days or 30 days if you need to do more public hearings, so forth. The delay of a month is not a big deal only to the council members in fundraising which has been discussed doesn't really affect anything else and this map will be chosen for the next 10 years and as another gentleman here mentioned the importance of having an independent commission versus the current council picking their voters versus the voters picking their council members that happened at the last one you made the map 106 chairman frank and the public was in 100% in support of that map. And the council completely picked a different map that clearly there was something wrong with, clearly. Then they said, deal with it. You can fix it. You can fix it later. There will be another 
uh, map as soon as the census comes out. That's what we're here to do. We're not here to keep that bad map in place. We're here to fix it. And we have the chance to do that. And if that takes you an extra 30 days, you need to do it. And collaborating with the public. And for, for, for the woman that mentioned that you know she hasn't been involved and didn't know that she could tweak the map, it's been said all along from the very beginning at every meeting that I've been to, I've been to every single meeting, you have talked about tweaking the maps, taking public comment, making changes, try to make the best map that you can that fits the most communities. Why pick a map that's going to take these three communities over here and divide them when you don't have to? Try your best to take all the public comments, make the best map, and then going forward, 10 years from now, it'll be a lot easier. You just make little tweaks here and there to shift the population based on the growth. So my advice would be to make those tweaks. Pick those maybe two or three maps that you think are the best. Make those tweaks. Try to take in as much of the public comment as you can from all of the different areas and come up with a good map, a collaborative map. You have the right to do that. It's just been expressed as uh, Commissioner Sweeney read off from the very beginning that that's what's what the expect expectations were. And the attorneys at the beginning also told you today that you can do that. So why would you not? If there is a better map that can be made that meets most of the public comments, why wouldn't you do that? And so I, I, I ask you to do that. And I really appreciate all your work and your volunteer effort. I don't want to have to be here as often as you guys are either. But it's the only way you can stay up to date on what's going on. And I do appreciate all your time and effort. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public would like to speak? Good evening. If you can state your name for the record, please. Hi, my name is Shante Martin. And I live in the Pleasant Grove um, District. I have lived in Roseville for 18 years, 20 years. Um, my husband and I moved here to raise our children. I love Roseville. Um, it's been a great place to raise our children. They're um, college and high school now. Um, so it's been kind of neat to see our kids go through the Roseville K-8 system and then also through the high school um, system as well. And um, just been a great community for um, our family. And um, thank you to all of you. This is a big job. And I think when I first looked at these maps, I was trying to look at it through the lens of um, the boundaries of the school districts and that, both the um, elementaries and the high schools. Um, I'm a school teacher, so um, that's kind of you know my heart. So I look at it that way. Um, but it seemed impossible on all the maps to see it that way. So then the other thing that I had to look at was community. And I think that's why I moved to Roseville. That's why we stayed in Roseville. And I think that is one of Roseville's like most important um, aspects of our um, city is community. And, and hearing everybody talk, it sounds like it's the same for them as well, whether they live in the Casebird Kingswood area, the Sun City area, the Quail Glen area, the Blue Oaks area. So wherever they live, it seems like that's a very important. Um, I like Map B because it seems very simple. Um, going off of the two criteria, the top two criteria for adopting district boundaries. It seems to honor um, those top two criteria. Um, and then also the voting. Um, the opportunity um, for people to vote um, is really important and I think Matt B would honor that as well. Um, and um, like I said before, um, Matt B is my choice. I think the ideal of community allows for that. It's very clean. I don't think any of the maps are perfect. There's things that I would want to change on them, but then it changes all the numbers, but um, I am in favor of Matt B. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anyone who hasn't spoken yet tonight who'd like to keep on item 5.2? Uh, my name is Sherry Scott. I was born and raised in Roseville. And so the changes I see on these maps are just uh, unbelievable to me. Uh, I moved back to Roseville in 2019, and I am for draft map B. 
I, I think I heard somebody say that they're looking at adding Esteton in, into the MAC area. Um, I'm wondering if that could be taken all the way just on the uh, south side of Pleasant Grove because I think there's another community slated planned uh, next to Esteton right across uh, from Sun City. And so maybe that that little boundary, uh, it doesn't look like there's any other residences in there at this point that might tie it in uh, for our city council member to deal with that corridor. Just my opinion. Thank, Thank you very much. Any other members wishing to speak? You're welcome to at this time. No, please first. No. If, he, if you don't mind coming first, he's he's. he's first from me. <laughs> uh, Sue Cook from uh, Our Neighborhood. I looked through this thing so many times and flip flopped which path I preferred. I don't know several times, but there are two general things I would like to see. I would like to see Sun City. Um, stay with group three, I guess it is, the yellow. Um, I would like to see historic Sierra Vista stay with the core neighborhoods. And um, other than that, uh, I agree my daughter lives in Quail Glen. I don't believe Quail Glen should be split. They have issues, but I think it's generally trying to stay together, but they should. Um, and I don't see any reason to split, make change or uh, the neighborhood living at farm and Blue Oaks. They're fine the way they are now, currently, and I don't see any issue to why we would change those. Um, so I, I can't give a preference to any one map, but I would like to see some, you know, changes, in several different things. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Sue. Just a point of clarification, did you say you wanted to see Sun City in District 3? Well, did you say yellow or gold or something? I wasn't quite sure what. So the, yes, the kind of orangish one is District 5, the one further to the west? Or the purplish one is District 4? No, I think it should stay with the Blue Oaks corridor. It should stay with Blue Oaks, okay. I mean, either, either way, but it... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Marcus Laluca, East Roseville. Um, I know I spoke to you on Thursday about uh, a little bit of history lesson for those of you who have uh, uh, been here less than 30 years. Um, one thing I want to mention in looking at the various maps, again, um, what people may not realize in this large city we have now, uh, is that there are really two areas that pay for most of the amenities that we have. Great police force, great fire, great parks, all of the uh, trails, a lot of things uh, that we have, all the extras that make Roseville um, the top city in the state, one of the top cities in the nation, and that is the Auto Mall and Highland Reserve and Highland Park. Um, all that commercial, Galleria, the 150 acres of freeway uh, commercial pay for a lot of stuff, a lot of the extras that other communities in the state simply don't have. We have one of the highest sales taxes uh, per capita in the state, um, and that pays for all the things that we sometimes take for granted. Um, and the one reason why I wanted to give that history lesson uh, a bit uh, last Thursday, even though I live in East Roseville, is I worked in Highland Reserve um, literally for probably close to 25 years on projects. Um, many of the projects you see built there, I represented over the, over the uh, decades. Um, and when I look at those maps again, really want to reiterate some of the comments that people have made but, um, about keeping, for example, Sun City together, keeping Quail Glen together, keeping Blue Oaks intact, uh, what we typically refer a lot to as uh, North Roseville. Um, but only uh, the map B compared to maps, for example, C, D, and F does not carve up Highland Reserve and Highland Park. 
Um, and to give you some background also for folks that are in Highland Preserve um, that people may not realize is that area was, I believe, the only area ever in the state to have a brand new junior high and a brand new elementary school, brand new, spanking new, no children padlocked for years. They had a very tight tax burden. It was one of the first specific plan areas that had a very high tax burden that came into play in 1991, the beginning of a recession. And um, they had great roadways, not much traffic on them, um, but their kids were had to be bused all to school all over the uh, city because the schools right across the street that those homeowners could see they couldn't, they couldn't go into. And they also put up with a lot of regional traffic that many parts of our city do not have to put up with. Their infrastructure was sized, not just for Roseville residents, or Rockland residents, but from people coming from even the uh, Tahoe area all the way to uh, Central Valley up to Sacramento. And so they face that traffic also. And I ask you to give some special consideration um, when you're looking at maps um, to not carve up an area that has literally had to give so much to the rest of this community. Um, map B, as I said, uh, is the only plan before you that keeps East Roseville whole, Highland Reserve with Highland Park. Those are two plans together. They were actually part of one overall plan. North Roseville, including Del Webb, um, Quail Glen, Blue Oaks area, um, Central Roseville, and West Roseville together. It has the least number amount really in terms of dramatic change before you, um, but at the same time, and again, with some of the changes, I think that, uh, that your chair mentioned, um, about uh, the Escaton uh, parcel and about the store of Sierra Vista, um, those kind of tweaks as you consider going into uh, a point of having a map that you're going to publish, um, really look to avoid not only drastic changes, but also keeping areas together that as part of the land use planning process of the city that we all benefit from over the last uh, 35 years when specific plans were first utilized in this community. Um, and we have all benefited from that, that we try to look at keeping those areas whole that have been whole before. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Any other members of the public like to speak tonight? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close pu public comment. Can, can we still make comments? Yeah, so yeah, you know, I'm going to open it back up to, to commissioners. If you want to reflect on some of the things that the, that the public has said. I, mean, that's, that's yeah. I, I love getting this, this map. Yeah. And we had, well, I'm going to drop this. We had talked when uh, our registrar of voters, Ryan Bronco, was here. He was talking about using this information to preserve polling places. And I'm glad someone brought this up this evening because this is important that we look at these lines. The problem. I see is, and I when we are sort of like under a threat of making, if we make a change, we're going to get sued. If that's the case, why have we been circulating this the whole time? Communities of interest looking for information. So I think that argument kind of scares me when I hear it. But I just want everyone to know that we are here to keep an open mind. This is why we have this form, and this is why we're you know discussing any changes we might make. Um, that's one thing I wanted to talk about. And because someone here asked that we speak our minds, and I want to get back to this issue of disenfranchisement, which is a word I absolutely hate. But it's the question of whether we are hurting voters when we delay the opportunity. Oh, can I stop for a moment? I'm from District 4. I'm in the lion's den here, and I understand that. So anyway, so when we when we we talk about delaying the vote for a city council member for two years, I've been asked, does that increase somebody's power? Does that decrease somebody's power? I think that's all subjective. I think it's it's speculation. There are things that I have learned on this commission. Measure R was passed by two-thirds of the voters in Roseville in a general election. I think that's a, that's a pretty strong <coughs> mandate for our, our job here. I think we're doing a great job. And 
the, our first criteria is the, the uh, contiguous, contiguous, and connected boundaries, which is something any redistricting effort should do. But the second criteria was to the extent practical, practicable, the geographic integ integrity of any local neighborhood, local neighborhood association boundaries, or local community of interest shall be respected in a manner that minimizes its division. And I bring this up in case, I mean, like I said there are so many supporters in my district of Measure B, but I want you to know why I'm still considering D, E, and F. So I gather that a majority of the voters in Roseville have decided the best way to protect their vote is to provide district boundaries that keep their neighborhoods together, that it gives them the kind of influence that they need over the city council. So map B divides four neighborhoods, and that is over 28,000 voters. And so whether that makes them more or less, their vote more or less powerful, you know, subjective. Um, so I, I'm not sure of that, but again, it's a clear majority of the voters in Roseville who believe it is important that we use this criteria. So, and if we ignore these directions provided by the voters, I believe we are doing far worse than just delaying someone's opportunity for two years to vote for a city council member. Think what we would be doing if we don't make every effort to meet that first criteria is that we are ignoring the voters for five elections and for 10 years. So, Again, I'm still reserving my decision. I'm glad you're all here. I love your input, but I just wanted to bring that out because that argument has not been brought to the public yet. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other commissioners want to volunteer or shall we move our way from Aaron all the way down? I'll jump in. I'll start. Okay. All right, go ahead. Um, just sort of uh, back on the, the question of can we tweak these lines? Can we live line draw this, this and that? I appreciate Commissioner Smoothie bringing up the, 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 the minutes yeah. really of, of those early meetings. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess I just sort of want to reset, and maybe this goes to, to you, Michelle, to, to make sure we're doing the right thing. I mean, it's one thing for our demographer consultant to say, oh, you guys can do this. Well, okay, maybe he misspoke, maybe in other cities that's allowed but maybe because of the way our charter is written, it's not allowed here and he may have just made a mistake. Um, I could say the same thing for Joe. Joe clearly said, you can tweak these things. You can, you know, we can have a new map and language like that. Did he make a mistake? And we should now sort of talk about that. And, and we went into this process thinking that we can tweak lines and I, I thought we could but I just want to sort of reset and looking at that charter language, are we sure we can do that and there's nothing illegal about, do, about tweaking those lines based on how the charter is written and how the people voted for that charter amendment? So um, let me just say this. So um, we have a city charter and a city charter is like a local constitution, right? It's voted by the, the voters. It can only be amended or um, repealed by the voters. And when you have a city charter, that takes precedent over state law. So we have our own rules about how we redistrict. Now, there are some redistricting criteria that do apply to charter cities, and they are reflected in Article 11 of the charter. The contiguousness, the compactness, things like that are required by state law. And there are certain time frames and things like that that we have to follow. But that's all encompassed within Article 11. The uh, voters actually, when they adopted Article 11, did uh, approve some tweaks to uh, this, the criteria in state law. For example, the, the reference to neighborhood associations, that's not in state law. State law refers to neighborhoods. It refers to communities of interest. But the voters have chosen to adopt Article 11 with the reference to neighborhood associations because the Charter Review Commission recommended the council that that was an important criteria. Um, so given that, we have to follow our charter, right? Our charter says that the, uh, that the, charter, the Independent Redistribution Commission shall publish draft 
map, and we interpret that to be maps too, for a period of 30 days and hold at least five public hearings. So you're doing six, right? So you exceed that. Then it says the, the Independent Redistricting Commission shall adopt a final map. It doesn't say that it has to be one of the six draft maps. So Joe and I last Friday consulted with our outside counsel who's an election law expert and who does redistricting throughout the state of California and other cities, both general law cities and charter cities. And we asked him, just in his experience, how does this play out? Realizing that we have our own charter, how does this play out in other cities? Do other cities make tweaks? We asked our demographer. Yes, that's kind of the whole purpose behind having the public hearings, right? To come together to make tweaks. From our perspective, it becomes, what is the process if you decide to make tweaks, right? Because our charter really doesn't say. Joe was talking about analogous state law that says draft maps have to be published for seven days before being adopted as the final map. So there's a publication period for a draft map to become a final map. Our charter doesn't say that. Our charter clearly distinguishes, there's a distinction between draft maps and a final map. You must publish the draft maps for 30 days, hold five public hearings, and then you shall adopt a final map. It doesn't say it has to be one of the six um, maps. Uh, what we've been struggling with is kind of like, do, do you do a seven day publication period? Do you do another 30 day publication period? Do you do another 30 days and do another five public hearings? You know, um, uh, mental note in 2030, I hope the voters will be um, voting on the charter again and maybe we can clean up some of this stuff and we can do a deep read afterwards and, this is the first time we've ever, you know, implemented this whole process. But, you know, our charter really doesn't say. Um, after talking to outside counsel, I am confident that we can make tweaks. You know, our recommendation on the seven-day publication period is that let's be analogous to state law. And I think that gives us, you know, um, some cushion there. So we have another publication period. And also so the public doesn't feel surprised that you live, live draw, you know, maps on the 24th and then adopt that map right then. You know, that's going to be hard on staff, too, because we have to adopt a resolution for you to adopt, but when we put in the resolution, we don't know because we don't know what the map's going to look like. Um, and we have to adopt, we have to draft a redistricting plan, a final redistricting plan. How are we going to draft that plan? How staff going to write all this up when we don't even know what you're going to decide on the 24th? So we um, like the idea of the seven-day publication period. Now, there's some talk about, let's do another 30 days. We can certainly do another 30 days, right? We can do another 30 days publication period. We can do another five public hearings. And this is where it's going to be up to the, one of the gentlemen was correct. I don't have a legal definition for what's tweaking and what's major. That's going to be up to you, right, and your comfort level. If you make significant changes to an existing map or come up with a brand new map altogether on the 24th, do, how do you feel about putting it out there for another seven days as opposed to another 30 days? You know, what would the community think about that? So that really is up to you. But um, as far as from a legal perspective, our recommendation is if you make tweaks on the, on the 24th, let's do a seven day publication period, come back on the 31st, and then we can adopt that as the draft map. Now, the thing is, if you, you wanna do more than one draft map on the, the 24th, then I'm gonna recommend that we start over because at that point, that is draft maps, as opposed to if you pick down to one, that becomes your tentative final map, that you're just publication, public, uh, publicizing for the public to look at before you take final action. But if you end up picking a number three or something like that, then that to me feels like draft maps, and here we, here we go again, right? Does that answer your question? The answer is can we tweak and the answer is yes. Don't, don't make me spell an agonist or whatever that word was. Um, I, I guess just to, well, just one last point on that. Um, you, you were clear that our state ch or our city charter trumps state law, but, but you're still interpreting that we're probably safe with the seven days as opposed to the 30. Okay. Yeah, because the problem is, is our charter doesn't say what happens if you tweak the map on the day you're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to adopt the map. So it's a bit of a gray area, it's so it's up to this area. commission to, to, to navigate through that gray area and come up with consensus. That's correct. So when, when we're talking to our outside counsel about this kind of gray area and looking at the language and parsing the language, um, it's our recommendation that to be on the safer side, it would probably be good to do a seven-day publication period. Okay. 
And so for, with that charter, when it was drafted, it, it does reference, you weren't thinking plural maps that we would be putting forward. It says singular draft map and then adopt. So in that sense, it would make sense. You've got one map in, that that's insinuating that's gonna be put forward for the public to comment on, right. and then you're adopting, it's one map. That's correct. We're talking six maps, which then, that makes the waters real murky, doesn't it, with the language? I agree, and I asked outside council about that, and he says, yes, it's frequent that a lot of cities do put forth more than one draft. You know, so that's not uncommon. But you're right, when we were drafting that, we, we did it in singular, and wasn't thinking about the plural, so, you know, per in S, charter, charter amendment in 2030, um, so we talked about that. But you're right, it wasn't really thought that there would be, you know, six. I can tell, I'm hoping on, on the 24th, that we're narrowing the six maps down to one, and we're tweaking <coughs> live line drawing one map. Right. Maybe I'm not even thinking that, but that's what I'm hoping we're doing on the. And 24th. again, the, the process for deciding how we do that will happen on the 24th. Yes, that's correct. But it's good to have some discussion about that now. Does anyone think I'm crazy? No, I, I no. think it's great that we have a final map and a majority vote. Any commissioners well, want to address what Ryan uh, well, or so what Ryan had brought up? Or? No, I would just say that um, you know we we came into this thinking we were going to hear feedback from six, six different locations plus whatever came in uh, from the public through these forms, and then really start to hone in on what we should be adopting from that point. So to me, there was never a point in my mind that, that I thought one of these maps would be 100% perfect for every comment we hear across the city. So for us to not have the ability to adjust, I think would be a disservice, more so than adjusting, and then if we need to give extra time, give extra time. Uh, because I know for me, People have said, oh, we want to hear what, what, what you guys are thinking. Well, that's great, but if I start forming an opinion just based on the first meeting or the second meeting, then I didn't wait and hear all the comments through all six meetings, and that's not fair to the people who we have to hear from. So I'm taking all this in to come back on the 24th and then kind of that through that process on if we're lucky enough to pick one of these maps and not change it that would be fantastic but i don't think i, mean, I think that's pie in the sky uh, and then we'll adjust and then do either a seven day or if we uh, have to go 30 days i don't think there's uh from what i heard last week there's no reason we can't go 30 days if we have to it would be nice to not have to, but I think in the best interest of what we're doing and all of the feedback from the public, that's really the, what we should be looking at. That kind of time. I'll, I'll put this on, on the table. If, if we end up doing the, really the seven, but this more applies to the 30, if we figure that that's what's required, does anyone think that we need to have more public hear hearings during that time? No. How, how do you not? I, I don't understand really what the purpose of a seven day public comment period is if it has no impact on the ultimate deliverable. Nor do I see what a 30 day public comment period, um, how it is useful if there are no changes that can be made. It, it is reenacting what we're doing today without any opportunity to, to, to digest that and then, unless we then kick the calendar forward one more time uh, with a new map. So I, I think it was Commissioner Waldrop said, you know, we are the deciders. All of the permutations of maps that could have been drawn and we may land on on the 24th could have been submitted during the time that the maps were open. I think that the idea that we can, in fact, land on a perfect map is ideal. It's wonderful, of course, if we can do that. Uh, 
I, I think it was Ms. Cho that said, you know, her idea of coming to a meeting like this was to look at the six maps that had been presented and choose from the one that she thought best represented the communities of interest and, and her perspective. So that, I mean, it, it's, my, my position has morphed a little bit over time. I was thinking, yay, live line drawing, it becomes the best map. But um, for the folks that came to meeting one, did they know that? Uh, how many were in that camp at that time? I, I don't know. I think that there, there probably is a better map out there, but this commission undertook the task of down selecting from 23 to 6, not from 23 to 6.1 or 6.2 or 6.3 number of maps. So I, I think that we are the decision making body here. Um, and again, that, that ideal of perfection and it is, is one that we all strive for, but are, are we actually going to get there or are we tasked with taking what options we have in front of us and making the best choice for the time that we're in? Anybody else like to speak at this time? Kind of. I just want to say something very briefly. I know from the very beginning we had the, uh, I love D, uh, D, E, and F, or I hate D, E, and F. And I, th I think there's a couple of reasons for it. One was the six year voter gap, which I, I understand. Some people are very upset by that, but we have to remember that you still have representation. You just didn't get to choose this time around. So that's just, that's my take on that. But one of the other reasons I think that people, and I've heard this over and over again, is to say, um, you know, E and F have most of the, the um, communities intact. Uh, and those three also say that Sun City is not intact, but in fact it is. It's, there's this little corner that we've already figured out here that has no residents in it that is called Sun City, but if you pull that in there, it, it's really part of um, whatever is adjacent to it over on the right. Anyway, so we, uh, we decided to just pull that little parcel out and put it with another community, and the map tool then says, oh, you're missing a piece of Sun City, but there's no voters in that block. So when it says, Sun City is being divided. It is not being divided on any of these maps. No voters in Sun City are divided from other Sun City voters. That's all I want to say. <laughs> Jeff, I just was, for clarification, if we, whatever formation that we take with a different looking map Monday, are you, were you saying then that your preference would be to do another 30 days with public hearing? I mean, it, I think it's a question for council again. What what benefit? We're we're adhering to a state statute then, uh, but what benefit do you get out of a seven day public comment period um, if there's no opportunity to act beyond it? So you could act beyond it because come the thirty first, you could choose not to adopt that map, right? So then, of course, then. What do you, where does that leave you? You're going to have to then put out another map. You know, like you said, it could be never ending. And keep in mind, your deadline is June 10th. <laughs> you got a little time. Staff will like freak out if you go to June. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think it's important to note that that language about public comment is it comes from again section 2.628 subsection D1 of. The elections code a draft map shall be published on the internet for at least seven days before being adopted as a final map so if we're going to be making tweaks of any kind at the january 24th meeting then in order to it, it is our recommendation in the city attorney's office is that you should publish that on the internet on you know theoretically the 24th and then come back on the 31st 
and that would be when we do a final map adoption as well as a debrief and things like that. So that, that's the recommendation for the additional week in there is really just for publishing it to uh, comply with this analogous state law uh, because we don't have anything in our city charter that specifically talks about if we were to change the map from the draft map to the final map. Other commissioners, Andrew? Yeah, I just want to say that that I appreciate everybody here. I'm so impressed because we fought to have six meetings instead of five. And when we finished, when we before we even started the first public meeting, we wondered how many people usually show up. And the expert said maybe 10 to 15 people. And obviously, we reached out and it was successful. So thank you for coming out and voicing your, your opinions. Um, but I also, at the same time, understand that everybody wants to know, for transparency's sake, where we stand based on what we've heard. But that's kind of like having the jury tell you, well, we think he's guilty, but you know, we, we can't say yet. We haven't heard. Part of the process is there's six public hearings. So that's what I'm doing is listening to everyone's comments. Tonight, everybody said B, but in all the other public hearings, it wasn't just B, it was D, E, and F. So what I'm listening to is not just which map, because it's not a vote, it's why did you like that map? Like D, E, and F, they liked the map because the main reason was because the neighborhood associations would stay together. That was a priority. So that's the lesson I learned from your comments. We still got one more district to, to listen to. And so before I make any final decision, I have to hear what they have to say, because it might be different. Everybody can, can't agree. It's really difficult, and we're the ones that have to ultimately make the decision. So yes, your comments are important. Yes, do we have a, a perfect map and can just pick it? No, we couldn't pick it when we had 23. We can't pick it now because we don't have all the comments yet, but we're getting closer. So your comments are extremely valuable and the reasons for your comments, how you feel about a map is extremely important and that's what I'm listening to. So it, just hang in there, be, a, be a, able to watch on TV, because I want the decision to be made on TV where everybody can see it and everybody can still phone in and make comments. As we make up the map, hopefully we'll get down to that one map that only needs a little bit of tweaking. If it needs major things and it doesn't fall within the definition of tweak, doesn't matter to me. What matters is did we get it right and what do most people want to be the map, the district map for the next 10 years. So regardless of everything else, I want to get the map right. A threat of a lawsuit doesn't scare me. Not that I'm like anything, but that's not what's going to guide my decision. My decision is going to be guided by what is right by the residents of Roseville, because we all are Roseville residents. We're not city council members. We're not election officials. You know, we're, we're the same as you, but we, happen to be in the position. So that's how I feel, that's how I'm gonna act, and hopefully that's transparent <laughs> enough. Mary? I'm trying to get the volume up, which is hard for me. Um, I wanna re reiterate what Andrew said in terms of the comments. I have been really impressed with a lot of the public comments we've been getting, not just people's opinions about they like this or they like that or anything, but some of, the, some of the comments have made me think more about specific issues. Like I think, I think it was Ms. Crawford the other day on a phone call mentioned the, the voting delay or the disenfranchisement, whatever you wanted to call it. And one of the things she mentioned was that it's inherent in the district structure, which makes me, and I'm not sure if it's a comment or a question, some voters being disenfranchised is going to happen next time too. And is, you know, if we were to take the district map that has the smallest change this time, does that mean the changes are going to be bigger next time? 
because of the population growth, is that going to change things or not? So I don't know how to think about this issue yet because I don't know what the implications are and I don't know if it's something the demographer can help us with. But the fact that every time the redistricting happens, some voters are going to be affected as to whether they're going to be able to vote or not until there's no more growth in the city. And that's, that's going to be a continuing issue no matter what we decide. And I'm not sure how to think about that yet. Thank you. Holly? Uh, I think, I, well, let's see, I'm still in like the formation process in my head. I'm still taking feedback from everybody. And um, we're going to go to the west side on Thursday. Um, and it's been very, very helpful to hear from the public because when we first started this process and we selected the maps from the 23 public drawn maps, um, there were things that I was not thinking about um, that were put on my radar by, by people that showed up to speak. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it's been a really great process. I'm looking forward to getting down to the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. I don't want to comment on everything, but I'd like to comment on this round too. Yeah. I really appreciated all the, the feedback that everyone gave. And again, like Commissioner Mary Griffa said, that it was very specific. And so I really appreciated, you know, hearing like, okay, Quail Glen wants to be with Pleasant Grove, you know, Campus Oaks and Blue Oaks. So having those in my mind helps me understand that if, if tweaks have to be made, you know, well, what, what are the, the different scenarios, those smaller communities of interest that we should really be tweaking to preserve. I know that one of the communities that I'm, I'm, I'm worried about in Map B that we've heard a lot from at the other communities is historic Roseville. And you know we've heard people describe sidewalks not existing where their kids walk to school. We've heard about hot holes. So, Things like that, that is why we have districting to make sure that an area with specific needs has an accountability measure to make sure council member is out there fighting for them, their sidewalks, what their kids need to walk to school, you know, all of those things. So I want to make sure that we don't divide any communities that are at risk of being left behind. And so, you know, in terms of the different maps, people have problems with every single map. <laughs> and so it's like, well, you know, on map B, Sierra Vista not being in with historic Roseville, and then at the last meeting, hearing that Diamond Oaks, the other side of some of these streets, also identifies with historic Roseville. I, I spoke with someone who said that when you go to Roseville High School dances, you usually take your pictures at the Diamond Oaks Park and then go on. So learning about those communities helped me understand, oh, historic Roseville. Okay, they're at risk of being broken up. Um, so that's a problem that people identify with not be. We've talked about Caseburg Kingswood. They were split up last time. They've organized to create a neighborhood association since then. Uh, I appreciate that Commissioner Wagner brought up the fact that neighborhood associations are explicitly mentioned. So those are some of the things that, you know, if, if Map B is the one that moves forward, I hope we do make changes to, you know, Caseburg Kingswood with similar communities at Foothills Junction. We have people come in and, and talk or write in about north of Vineyard, west of Foothills, wanting to be up towards Pleasant Grove and that baseline road being similar. So we are we're getting all of these different inputs, and so I really appreciate the comments being really focused in this is who my community of interest is. Please protect that community of interest. Yeah. And if you do have you know any adjustments on some of the other maps, if we do talk about more than just map B, and that was your preference, what would it take to make map C, map? E more preferable for you. So I am interested in hearing that if you want to write it in and send it to us. Thank you, Julia. Uh, so a couple of things. First of all, again, seeing the, the many people, but also just the comments that were made here, uh, it doesn't matter who our city council members are, our districts, our neighborhood associations, but 
you know, we can be very proud that the, the quality of people that we have in, in Roseville, and when I say quality, that participate and want to participate and want to know what's going on and want to influence what's going on. And um, the fact that we have a, a variety of points of view on different neighborhoods, you know, if I look at whether it's Case Square Kingswood or Diamond Oaks and Sierra Vista, uh, I, I actually hear different people saying different things sometimes. And so, uh, for example, with Case Square Kingsburg, that, from my understanding, was two neighborhood associations at one point and, and brought together. Um, and there's also a, a uh, geographic barrier, some open space between them. So, you know, where it would be very nice to be able to keep neighborhood associations together, if there's a geographic or a meaningful way of, of dividing them. I live in Stone Ridge, and some of the maps divide Stone Ridge, but again, in our neighborhood association meetings, we're kind of divided whether or not we wanted to stay as uh, in one district or whether it's okay to be divided in two districts. And so I don't think that there's necessarily one representation of every single point of view. There's a lot of different points of view. And so when I, when I hear different points of view, I like to just see for myself. And so I drive through Sierra Vista Neighborhood Association, I'll drive through Caseburg, and I'll drive and say, where, where's like, where are all the utility lines that are dividing neighborhoods? Maybe they're in the same neighborhood association, but you've got these big open spaces and utility lines going through them. And so, you know, again, I recommend to any of our, our commissioners, if you haven't already done so, just get in the car and drive around and see, okay, we've heard from people, but you know, see for our own eyes where there might be some natural uh, barriers. And I'm not, again, I'm not wedded to any particular um, map at this point. You know, like, like Andrew was saying, wanting to hear from, uh, from every single uh, district that we're, that we're presenting at and hear from the public, and then we'll start making our decisions. It's, it's hard because we go from a Thursday meeting to a Tuesday meeting, no, to a Monday meeting, right? We go from a, Tuesday, a Thursday meeting to a Monday meeting. And so, and then at that Monday meeting, I, I hope that commissioners will start thinking about potential motions that you'll want to make because it's difficult when a motion is made verbally and you know you have to write it all down. So if you do have a motion you'd like to make about narrowing down certain maps or making a vote on, on certain maps, try and have it written down so we can give it to staff and staff can more, more easily record it. And uh, again, for transparency, we want to know what those motions are. Any other comments from commissioners? Seeing none. Oh, oh, oh yeah. seeing one. You're quick. You're quick. <laughs> um, I just want to make a couple notes just as everybody was talking, so I'm going to be kind of, it looked like we're wrapping up, but I, I don't want to take us back just a little bit. Um, there's been some talk of, um, you know, public comment, and if, if we don't move lines that we're somehow not listening to the public, I think there can, there can be plenty of robust public comment on the six maps and we talk well what about people's community of interest and things like well absolutely describe your community of interest and say and map you know d best fits my community of interest because it places me here and this and that i mean there's and that would then inform us to focus on that map so um, i'm not saying we shouldn't tweak or, or adjust these maps at all but i don't want the public thinking that um, if we pick a map as it is, that we somehow didn't listen to, listen to public comment. Um, so I just want to touch on that. And then um, sort of spinning off of what Chair Frank said just about, and, and sort of you, Commissioner Sweeney, about you know sidewalks in a particular neighborhood. I think there's two trains of thought with that. Someone could say, I need you know one council member that's 100% vested in my neighborhood, and, and I can go to that, that one, you know, um, council member, but at the same time, I think you could easily make an argument as well that I'd rather have two that both represent these broken sidewalks. I've got them that I can go talk to. I can convince them as a constituent that they should be, you know, vying for these two sidewalks. Now I just got to get one of the other three, <laughs> you know. So I think there's just different ways to look at that as an advantage or, or disadvantage. Um, Another thing with um, neighborhood neighborhoods neighborhood associations being preserved, I think that's that's very important too. I think there is maybe a little bit of gray on those edges as well, but I just want to kind of show where I'm feeling a little bit about. Um, I think everybody's looking at um, not everybody, but the numbers are what they are. You know, D, E, and F, 
being, especially E and F, 98% of neighborhoods preserved. Well, in my opinion, I mean, all but maybe C preserved neighborhoods, I, I mean, you know, there's one, A is below 90%, but I, I can tell you, if my kid came home from school and said, oh, I got 91% in all my classes, I'd say, you aced it, awesome, great job. <laughs> I wouldn't say, well, come on, you, you couldn't get to 98? Like, I think 91, anything above 90, I think hits the mark, it, you know, in terms of um, hitting the mark with, with uh, keeping neighborhood uh, associations together. Um, and then, last point, um, <laughs> kind of in the lion's dead of District 4, I live in, in District 4 as well, um, lived here in Crocker Ranch, um, since 2007, moved there with a one and three year old and raised, raised kids here, love the city. Um, just as I look at the maps, um, and maybe I'm showing my hand a little bit early, we still have to listen to District 5, but um, we've had five of our six public hearings, um, so I feel com comfortable kind of having this open discussion where maybe I didn't earlier on. Um, but I have, just looking at neighborhood associations, I would have a really difficult time supporting anything that didn't have Blue Oaks, Sun City, Quail Glen, Campus Oaks, and Pleasant Grove all in the same district. I, I mean, I've seen it firsthand from where, from, you know, including, um, you know, some comments that, that Sun City folks have made, but in terms of where, where we shop, we recreate, where we bank, you know, I see, the, you know, the Sun City Bicycle Group in their yellow vests all through my neighborhood and everything. I, it's just where the kids go to school. Um, it's, I would have a really hard time breaking up those five neighborhood associations. And the, the way this, um, looking at Map B, how it does cut uh, Fidman Farm um, using Fidman, Fidman Road as the dividing line um, you know, I could probably make a case either way, but I can definitely make a case for moving that neighborhood, that JMC development that's east of, um, well, it's not all JMC, but um, east of Fidman into District 4. Um, you know, there's that, uh, getting into the weeds a little bit, but kind of at the northern tip of that, there's a triangle parcel that's zoned commercial. Um, that was very controversial, got appealed, got sued. There was gonna be a gas station there. Neighborhood came out in droves, op opposing it, wanted to redo, uh, redo the plan. Those are basically all my Blue Oaks neighbors um, that came out um, against that or wanted that redesign. And yet that, that parcel would be in Fidman Farm. So, I, you know, and sort of the last point on that, um, I spoke with, um, uh, April Marskell, who was at the um, public hearing la last time, she's the, the president out there, and she was shocked. That she actually kind of thought that that area was part of Blue Oaks. She's always treated it like Blue Oaks. I know it's not, um, but in terms of, you know, hey, we're having you know Friday night, what, whatever at the park for the neighborhood, or it's Santa's coming, or you know whatever it might be, blood drive or anything like that that neighborhood is included. So um, I, I think I'm not married to that, but I can definitely understand why um, Chair Frank drew, drew the map the way he did and put that um, into District 4. All right, again, this item is for information only. No action is required. We'll go ahead and move to item 5.3. Joe, you still awake? Yep, there he is. I'm still here. <laughs> can everyone still hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, we're getting close to the end of all of our public hearings. Uh, we are on meeting number five of six, and so coming up on Thursday night, we're having our final six of six public hearings. Uh, this one's at St. John's Episcopal Church, which is on Pleasant Grove, west of Fitment, out in District 5. And so we're going to do another meeting very similar to this meeting tonight where I'm going to give similar presentations and we're going to receive community of interest testimony and other testimony on the maps. <clears throat> and then moving forward, the next meeting we're looking at is January, Monday, January 24th. 
And that's sort of a meeting that we had always had penciled in as a final map adoption date. But I think what we're getting toward and what everyone's understanding is that if we're going to make these you know, final tweaks or live line drawing on the 24th, it is the city attorney's office recommendation to, if we change maps and, or change lines on the 24th, that we publish that new map on the 24th for at least seven days um, before we come back on the 31st, January 31st, to actually adopt a final map. So what I see moving forward is we have public meeting number six on Thursday night, and then on Monday, I anticipate, and I'm, I'm open to a discussion on this once I'm done talking about this, but on Monday the 24th, I imagine there being an item in the discussion where we talk about reducing the number of maps for further discussion down from six to whatever that other smaller number be, and then we take that smaller number of maps and start live line drawing on those little tweaks that we've been talking about this entire time to get to a point where we're comfortable with maps and then going forward with a vote where we sort of vote on uh, you know which map we're looking to move forward and so my hope is that at the end of the meeting on Monday the 24th that we have a again we have 11 voting members and so if there's a motion and the motion is seconded and a motion is passed, that's six commissioners voting in favor of the map. And then I would recommend that we take that map if we narrow it down to that on the 24th, publish that on the city's website for a period of seven days, then come back on January, Monday, January 31st, and what that meeting would be that would be the final actual map adoption meeting where the Independent Redistricting Commission adopts a resolution which adopts the specific map with specific boundaries. And at that point, then we would also have, you know, sort of a, a agenda item where we have a debrief and debrief of this whole process as well as, you know, suggestions for improvements or clarifications to our charter like Michelle had mentioned earlier. So that's how I envision the schedule moving forward, you know, just based on some of the recommendations and discussions that we've been having over this last week. Uh, I'd like to turn it back over to Chair Frank just to talk, you know, a little bit more about procedure, but I think that is generally the city attorney's recommendation at this point is that if we're going to tweak and make five line drawings and things like that, we don't have a concern about uh, a legal challenge necessarily about the procedure of this whole commission. Uh, we followed our charter. It has to do with if we're changing up the final maps on this January 24th date in order to comply with this section 21628 of the California Elections Code, we'd like to publish that uh, on the internet before we come back and adopt it on the 31st. So I'm going to turn it back over to Chair Frank at this point for any questions or comments. All right. Questions from the commissioners regarding Joe's presentation on the, the dates and what might happen on those those dates. Seeing none, we'll open it up to the public who has any questions or comments regarding the presentation in item five point three. State your name for the record, please. Steve Cho. For the meeting on the 24th, this is all with the public, I assume. It'll also be televised and we'll be able to do telephone uh, public comment. So what happens if, uh, if we're still abiding by the you know, distance sp space limitation? You, you run out of room in the room for public audience. If there's not enough space right. to, to give six feet or whatever it might be? Well, if we get a, a crowd of 100 people, or 200 which I was suspecting that there would be more interest since that's supposed to be the final meeting. Uh, I would just recommend that if you can or would like to stay home and watch on TV and call in with any comments, uh, you're more than welcome to. Uh, we've had some of our meetings that, that that's happened and we've had fewer people in, in the actual crowd. Um, Brian, do you, do you have any experience in terms of how we accommodate in, during coronavirus? That many people? Yeah, hi. Um, well, the room itself only holds, I think, 119, I think, is the 
the limit of the number of people in the council chambers when all the seats are taken. Um, we would need to discuss how we wanted to do uh, a six foot distancing, and that's what we wanted to do. If we, <clears throat> if we did implement that, uh, as we had uh, previously during the pandemic, it reduces the seating to about 25. Mm -hmm. So it really, it really reduces it quite a bit. So to your point, I would recommend if, if folks are concerned about that, that they watch from home and, and call in and, and give them a comment that way. That would probably be the easiest way. If we get too many people in the room, we're gonna to have to make an alternative plan as to what we would do with those other people. I don't have an answer for that right now, but it's something to think about. Do you think you would be able to have an answer by Thursday or? Sure, we could work on something by, by Thursday. Yeah. Any questions for Ryan regarding accommodations on the 24th? Thank you for that question, Mr. Chair. There are no health recommendations right now from the CDPH or CDC regarding social distancing, right? So um, th those, those got eliminated back in July. So it's only the, the masking. Um, obviously, though, if you're concerned, uh, this will be held in the chamber, so it will be televised. You can call in and have public comment that way, and that works out very, very nicely. All right, any other public comment? One closed public comment. Again, this was for information only. No action is required. Does any commissioner have any follow-up questions regarding public comment? This, just real quick, just a reminder that when we draw these maps, some of the limitations we have involve the federal census blocks that are drawn by the federal government. And so you might see uh, a, a, a district that looks kind of odd, but it may be that we simply cannot divide that census block. And so that's one of the reasons for that. And then also just keeping in mind, I'm sure you're all already aware of this, is that city council members aren't locked into their district. They are allowed to go into the other districts after we draw them and certainly that's encouraged. And we do hope that all of our city council members do represent the entire city, not just their district, that we create that culture in Roseville where, where city council members in the future will, again, get out of their districts and also uh, work with other, other city council members in their other districts. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> second. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> the meeting is adjourned till Thursday at St. John's.